have slipped the surly bonds of earth and danced the skies on laughter-silvered wings. Sunward I've climbed and joined the tumbling mirth of sun-split clouds and done a hundred things you have not dreamed of. Wheeled and soared and swung high in the sunlit silence, hovering there. I've chased the shouting wind along and flung my eager craft through footless halls of air. Up, up the delirious burning blue, I've topped the windswept heights with easy grace. Whenever lark or even eagle flew. And while with silent lifting mind I've trod the high untrespassed sanctity of space, put out my hand and touched the face of God. John McGee, who wrote the famous poem, High Flight, never dreamed that someday an eagle would top the windswept heights with easy grace. But then he never saw an eagle like this one. The Windecker Eagle, product of Windecker industry headed up by Dr. Leo Windecker in Midland, Texas. The Windecker Eagle is perhaps the world's most unique airplane, since it is the first and only powered aircraft with an airframe constructed of fiberglass reinforced plastic to be certified by the Federal Aviation Administration. The technology that went into the Eagle's airframe was provided by the Dow Chemical Company, a world leader in plastics research and production. The moment it was born, the Eagle captured the attention of people everywhere. And in December of 1971, the British Broadcasting Company introduced the Windecker Eagle to viewers of their network show, Tomorrow's World, in this manner. Many of the people who live here in Texas have their own private airplane for one very good reason. It's a very big place. And if you live 500 miles from the nearest town, the quickest and most sensible way to get there is in your own light aircraft. And this is the latest light aircraft on the Texas market. It was developed here. It's named the Windecker Eagle. And aviation experts have called it the biggest breakthrough in aircraft manufacture in the last 40 years. Because this is the first plane ever to be made of plastic and glass. The raw material looks like this. It's called NUF, non-woven unidirectional fiberglass. Epoxy resin is poured onto this. And the two materials bond together after four hours at room temperature to form this, a material that's three times stronger than conventional fiberglass. And in addition, the molecular bonding that occurs when this material hardens, goes on for another five years. So you end up with an airplane that's stronger than the one you originally bought. The whole plane is molded by hand and sections come together like this to form the fuselage. But the secret of Eagle's strength lies in the fact that these fibers lie in one direction only. You see, in conventional woven fiberglass, in a strain area, extra strain is caused by the fact that one fiber is lying on top of another and tends to crush it when stress is applied. And in addition, this stuff is bunched together at areas of known stress, rather like the muscle fibre in the human body, in order to take the stress best at the most critical areas. Now, a moulded plastic aeroplane is such a new thing that the American authorities demanded 20% more strength from this aircraft than from any similar conventional metal aircraft. And unlike metal, this plastic doesn't seem to have a fatigue point at which it could crack. You can even do this. But the real beauty 
that you can achieve with a plastic molded aeroplane lies in the aerodynamic lines. The designer of Eagle, who by the way was a dentist, used what are called light lines to achieve the extraordinary smoothness of this aeroplane. So if you choose a reflection and follow it all the way along the fuselage, the light that you see runs along the fuselage and down over the windscreen onto the nose without a single ripple or break, indicating total smoothness of surface. That clean aerodynamic line is best illustrated in parts of the aircraft like this one, where you join two structures together in a smooth line that's almost impossible to achieve with metal. If you happen to knock a bit off during a rough landing, you simply saw around the cracked area, take it out, put in some foam, and then mold a new structure in again over the top. The makers are absolutely convinced that the plastic plane is the plane of the future. Not only in the glamorous aviation industry, but in automotive and other conventional applications as well. The concept is futuristic, but the technology exists today.